every uh, group they discovered my name is there. Of course, most of us are also implicated in this. So sometimes I am a member of Hezbollah, members of the, uh, the uh, alliance of the of, of the uh, of the revolution. I am a member of whatever. Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda, not yet, but uh, <laughs> that's when I am promoted. Um, Inshallah, they, that will happen. But I'm also a member, uh, one of 31 people whose nationalities have been revoked, including Jalal Fayrouz, Jawad Fayrouz, who are two MPs, former members of parliament, also Ali Mushayma, Musa Abd Ali, and I don't know who else here. So, so at least five or six here out of the 31 people have had, have had their nationalities revoked. When, at the time, well, shortly after, our king was, you see, he's a good, good in uh, reshuffling things. So he took it, took the Bahrain nationality, and last month he he gave them gave the nationality to 240 UK nationals. Yeah. Uh, so he said uh, openly last month that he gave the British six things or five things. He said, "I am granting 240 uh, UK citizens the Bahrain nationalities." He said, I am investing 11 billion in the UK. In the same, I'm talking about the same period and the same week. Then he refurbished the Mons Hall at, the, <coughs> at Sandhurst for the, at the cost of 3 million pounds. Then he was complaining to the British, why did you leave Bahrain in 1971? Who told you to do so? So you should have stayed as a power, as a, as a colonial power in the Gulf, and you shouldn't have withdrawn. And then he uh, gave a contract to a construction company or architectural company run by or belonging to the uh, crown prince to, uh, here, to Prince Charles, to oversee the construction of 40,000 units, not for the Bahrainis, but for the riot police in the south of the country and for those people who are uh, brought from outside. Why are we... Uh, here we are. I, we have listened to quite a few of our friends and about prayer, uh, about their predicaments, pro, uh, their experience. But I think there is one thing that has always upset me: why the UK has this policy. Uh, almost everyone here, every Bahraini who leaves this country, <coughs> will be stopped at the port of departure, and when he comes back. Uh, he will also be, where is my bag? Give me, can you give me that bag? And every time we come, we will also be given, uh, stopped, and then after interrogation, they will give you what color is the, is the green, one. green or blue? blue? This is what we are given. After we spend two and a half hours in, uh, at, the, at Heathrow or anywhere, or at King's Cross, if we are coming from UK, uh, from uh, Europe, this is what is the, uh, at the end they will, ask you to sign that, yes, I have been interrogated in, 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 in relations to, uh, of course, to matters or within the uh, Anti-Terrorism uh, Act. And every time. Now, how many you have? I have a file of them. I keep them. Uh, so you have, I think, in a year's time, if you travel five times, six times, you get uh, six, seven of these. Why? We explained today. Uh, Alistair Bert, uh, thanks Sayyid Ahmed for showing us a glimpse of that, although we have already seen it, but it really makes you boil. Do we really live in a country which really promotes the values of democracy and the human rights? And uh, Mrs. Uh, Khawaja or Ms. Musawi uh, earlier said, that we lived here and you told us these values. Now, when we wanted to apply them in our homelands, this is the, these are the consequences that we face. Is this really justice? You uh, urge, it is similar to uh, President Bush when he urged the Iraqis uh, to revolt against Saddam Hussein in 1991. And once they rose, he allowed uh, Saddam to bomb them with the, with the, with the aircraft. Why? why? Why is it like that? Why, why are the interests of the West ca can only be guaranteed by dictators and, um, and torturers? 
And this, uh, this policy of impunity, giving impunity, as was mentioned by uh, my earlier uh, colleague who spoke uh, about uh, Law 56, one of the uh, audience, he, uh, Law 56, 2002, that gave explicitly uh, power to the king to shelter those who had been uh, who had been accused of torture, and I do not believe. I have few facts. Number one, I never believe that uh, a, a defunct regime could be uh, could be reformed, or a dictatorial or a hereditary dictatorship could be transformed into a democratic one. I do not believe that torture could ever be stopped. You can never imagine these dictators ruling without torture. Torture is a tool of uh, survival. They, without it, they cannot. Um, I cannot imagine uh, our regime remaining and allowing freedom of expression. You cannot, you simply can, you will not be allowed to have freedom of expression. Unfortunately for Mr. Vers, he said that it is not, they have not been the 31 of which I am, uh, well, I am next to the 13, not the 31, I'm talking about the 13 people whom we have been uh, talking about. These people have done nothing apart from expressing themselves. Nothing apart, I do not believe that anybody in the world can bring one single evidence that they have done anything apart from uh, uh, addressing the people and saying this is what we want. Now, as for the 13, we were tried uh, uh, by, uh, by the military court. And our uh, sentences still, for me at least, I didn't have the right to, to appeal against, uh, because I am outside. So my life imprisonment uh, still stands, in addition to the revoking of the nationality. So they try to tire you, to exhaust you by all this. But for people, and luckily for our uh, families of the detainees, wife of uh, Ibrahim Sharif, I was very happy to see her and to listen to how powerful her statements are. Wife of Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja, daughter of Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja, a friend, uh, son of Hassan Mushema, and all these people, they are source of um, uh, of of inspiration. This man, uh, whom, whom I think. Who, one of them showed, showed the uh, picture of Ahmed Farhan, the one who was uh, killed on the day the Saudis uh, intervened in Bahrain. I saw, I, was, I happened to be in Iraq recently for a conference, uh, and his father came to me. I didn't, do you know me? I don't re really know the, the father. He said, I am the father of this man. And then he was trying to boost my morale. It was my, my intention to boost the morale of those who are un living under torture. But he was, he was doing the act. He said, don't, don't give him, don't uh, compromise. We cannot uh, live uh, with this regime because they have done so many crimes. And we do not believe that they are going to try their, uh, their, their criminals, their torturers, their killers, those killers. Until now, we haven't seen <coughs> any torturer being tried. Re uh, really in an open court and in an, an, uh, a fair trial. So I do not believe all the, uh, when, we are, um, uh, when, we, when we are living on the 26th of June, uh, which is the International Day in support of torture victims, I do not believe that torture can ever be eliminated under dictatorship. Uh, we, I, cannot, I do not believe that the international community has been just when it is dealing with the Bahraini case. It has done nothing. In fact, it has ignored it. While um, we are, uh, we, while we hear uh, the calls to arm the Syrian rebels, uh, we see the Bahrainis being treated exactly in the opposite way, being interrogated at every port of entry into the UK and being denied the right to self-determination or even to, uh, to, to, to protest. Every day there are protests every single day throughout the year for the, since the 14th of February. I believe that this meeting w has helped to highlight some of the predicaments and feelings of our people, but also it has given impetus to those young activists that 
there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It is not all bleak or black, especially when you see, when I might personally see my friends, uh, the wives of my colleagues, or the daughters and sons of my uh, compatriots. I believe these are the hopes of the future. And with you, people like you, we are guaranteed a brighter one. Thank you.